Chapter 36 What are you implying, Marion? That Prince John had his brother murdered so he could steal the throne? Lady Cluck paced Marion's chambers, her anxious steps eating up the distance between walls. She ran a wing through the feathers on her head, clucking under her breath. Marion shrugged. I mean, maybe, she said, or maybe it was Sir Hiss. He's the one who seems to be in charge around here. And of course, he's the one who would have lost his cozy position, cozy position as court advisor had King Richard returned, she grimaced. There's no way my uncle would have put up with that slippery snake. But to kill, kill the king, Cluck cried. Do you really think he'd go so far? I don't know, Marion said simply, but I plan to find out. This might be exactly what we need to take Sir Hiss down. If we could find proof he's responsible, how are we going to do that? Marion tapped her claw to her chin. I think we need to go to this Rosenthorn thin Inn. It isn't too far from here, and we could sneak out through the hidden passageway and be back before anyone notices we're gone. Cluck nodded thoughtfully. It's not a bad idea. Maybe someone there saw something that night. Or maybe we'll be we'll find some sort of evidence left behind. Then it's settled, Marion declared. Meet me back here after dark, and bring some disguises for us too. We don't want anyone to get wound wind up wit, get wind of us asking questions. If we're about if we're right about Sir Hiss, he won't hesitate to have both our heads if he starts getting suspicious of our intentions. Cluck made a face. Right you are, she agreed. Leave it to me. Once they snuck out of the castle, it didn't take long to find the Rosenthorn Inn. As Joffrey had mentioned, it was right off the King's Road, the main thoroughfare running north and south through most of England. It turned out to be a bustling establishment that looked as if it had recently gone through some repairs. The roof had been newly thatched with some fresh, with fresh straw and shiny cobblestones lined with the path to the front door. Even the wooden awning outside proclaiming the establishment's name and family crest looked freshly painted, gleaming in the moonlight. Things must be good here at the Rose and Thorn, Marion thought, while the rest of the kingdom is falling apart. She couldn't help feeling a little suspicious. She beckoned for Cluck to follow her inside the inn. They pushed through the heavy wooden door, entering a large tavern bustling with other animals, all eating and drinking and making merry. She assumed most of them were archery contenders on their way to the tournament. Stopping there for the night made sense for those who didn't want to travel after dark. She stepped up to the bar, signaling for the bartender to come over. A moment later, a dog wearing a white apron approached, giving them a wary look. What can I do you for, strangers? He asked suspiciously. But then they probably looked a bit suspicious, dressed as they were in male tunics and tights, hoods pulled o low over their heads. The disguises were a little over the top, Marion had argued, but Cluck had insisted on it. As Marion had said, the last thing they needed was to be recognized. We're here by command of, the, of Prince John, she told the bartender, having to raise her voice to be heard over the din. He asked us to search the room where King Richard stayed when he was here. The bartender coughed in surprise. Excuse me, he said once he recovered. He looked around the tavern as if to make sure no one else was listening. It's just, well, you'll need to be, you'll be needing to speak to the proprieties about that. He disappeared into a back room. Marion and Cluck exchanged looks. That was strange, don't you think? Cluck shrugged. It could just be a touchy subject, she pointed out. I mean, having the king murdered in your own establishment and all. That can't be good for business. True, Marion admitted. Though it doesn't appear it's hurt them much so far. She gestured to the bustling tavern. Cluck opened her mouth to reply. But at that moment, two squirrels, a male and a female, leapt onto the bar. The male was dressed in a scarlet tunic made of fine fabric and trimmed in bright yellow. The female was wearing a lovely green dress with tiny acorns embroidered on the bodice. The male squirrel bowed low before his visitors. My name is Pitt, he said, and this is my wife, Squeak. We are, as always, loyal subjects to his majesty, King John. Prince John, Marion corrected before she could stop herself. 
Cloak shot her a warning look. It's just, he hasn't been crowned yet, she added quickly. Right, Pip nodded as if this made perfect sense. Of course, my mistake. What brings you here? asked Squeak, peering at the two of them worriedly. Is something wrong? I hope not, Marion replied. But we are tasked to investigate the former king's murder, which we understand happened, most unfortunately, at your inn. The two squirrels exchanged looks. I thought that was already investigated, Pip said, looking uneasy. They told me... He stopped abruptly as his wife stepped on his toe. Of course, of course, she said, smiling wildly. Whatever you need to do, we are happy to help. It was such a tragedy. She put a paw to her forehead. We only wanted to show His Majesty our humble hospitality. To thank him for bringing our sweet gir girl back home to us. But then those barbaric traitors, she shuddered. To think it happened under our own roof. I'm sorry, Marion said gently. I can't imagine what it must have been like to be here when it happened. Did you hear anything that night? Or see anyone slipping away? Anything you could tell us would help. Squeak shook her head. I heard nothing. I saw nothing. I was sound asleep in my own bed. It wasn't until the next morning that I heard... Learned of the unfortunate incident. She turned away as if still horrified by the memory. But what about the king's knights? Marion asked. Surely they would have alerted you to a murder in the next room. Pip looked disgusted. Those lot were still around, still sound asleep in their beds. The coming morning, a more useless crew I've never seen. Especially the one who slept in the king's very chamber. How could he have slept through it all? I have no idea. He paused and added, lowering his voice. Though maybe he didn't. Maybe he was the one who did the deed. After all, the door was bolted from the inside. Who else could have gotten in? Who was that? Marion asked, frowning. This was new information. The one who slept in the king's room. Do you remember? It was a fox, said Pip. Like you. My apologies, good sirs, but I don't, can't recall his name. I do, Squeak chimed in. It was Robin, Robin of Loxley. He was the one who shared the king's chamber. She made a face. And I don't mind telling you, he looked very suspicious the next morning, once the deed was discovered. Marion glanced at Cluck, astounded. Robin? Robin was the one they suspected killed the king? Of course that was impossible. There was no way Robin had anything to do with her uncle's murder. Robin loved Richard. He would have given his life to save his king. But then... What did happen that night in the king's room? If Robin was there, there was no way he wouldn't have defended his king if he came under attack. Unless he was drugged somehow. What if they had all been drugged? Who came to collect the body, she asked, once you realized what had happened? Prince John and his men, Pip replied. They arrived first thing in the morning, thinking to escort him home. Prince John was distraught, of course to learn of his brother's fate. The way he wailed, I still hear it in my bones, added Squeak, shuddering. Marion frowned. While John's reaction didn't surprise her, the fact that he'd shown up at the inn the next morning did. Sure, Joffrey and the others had told him his brother had stayed out that night to help a baby squirrel, but they'd left before they found the inn, they'd found the inn so they wouldn't have known to tell John about it. Had it been a lucky guess? She supposed Richard had to stay somewhere, had to stay, had to have stayed somewhere. Maybe the inn was the only obvious option. But still, something didn't add up. Why would Prince John go to the trouble of tracking his brother down when Richard was still, still had a complement of knights attending him? There was no reason to imagine he was in any danger. Had John just been so excited to see his brother, he couldn't wait any longer? Or had he already known exactly what he'd find? Can we still see the room? Cluck piped in. Whether the king was killed? Pip nodded. We could show you, he said. But you must know, it's been cleaned a hundred times since he stayed in, in it. I don't know if you'll find anything of interest there. We'd like to see it. Cluck assured him. Please lead the way. The squirrel nodded then scurried off the bar and through the tavern dodging singing patrons with mugs filled with brew on the way. 
At the end of the tavern was a steep wooden staircase leading up to the inn's second floor rooms. They climbed it and headed down a hallway. We gave him our best room, he said, a room fit for a king. It used to be for kings, actually. This whole establishment was once a hunting lodge for royals, royals before it became an inn. And this bedroom, I'm told, was where the kings would stay, he smiled wildly, as if proud of this little fact. Marion guessed he met, mentioned it often to impress his guests. At the very end, the squirrel stopped at a wooden door. He opened it and gestured for them to enter the room. This is it, he said. Though, again, I don't know what you're going to find here. He crossed his arms over his chest and waited. Thank you, Marion said, throwing a glance at the door. I'll let you get back to your guests. We'll call if we need anything else. Pip stood there for a moment, clearly displeased about being dismissed. But in the end, he resi resignedly scurried out of the room, leaving Marion and Cluck alone. I think he's in on it, Cluck declared once he was gone. He's acting awfully odd. Yes, Marion agreed, and his business is prospering while everyone else in the kingdom is suffering under cruel taxes. Perhaps he received a reward for his assistance. She scratched her snout. A horrifying thought suddenly occurred to her, occurring to her. What is it? Cluck asked. You look as if you've seen a ghost. Marion turned to her slowly. What if this whole thing was a setup from the start? What if the baby squirrel was only pretending to be lost to lead them here to the inn? Whoever did this knew Richard was too kind to pass up an opportunity to help one of his subjects, especially a helpless baby lost in the woods. Cluck nodded slowly. It's devious, but it does make sense. And then at dinner, they drugged the knights, and Richard too, probably. That's why they didn't raise an alarm when things began to happen. But what about the door? Cluck asked. They said it was bolted from the inside. How did someone get in? Marion walked over to the door, examining it closely. Sure enough, there was a heavy w wooden bar that swung down, securing it in place. Robin definitely would have latched this, he, she decided, which means the assassin had to have gotten in and out another way. I have a wonder... Cluck said thoughtfully. Marion watched as her attendant eyes traveled the room, then locked onto something behind her. She turned to see what her lady-in-waiting was looking at. A fireplace. Of course. Marion ran to the hearth, 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 feeling the stones. Cluck joined her, working the other side. A moment later, the chicken cried, Aha! And the fireplace swung away, revealing a dark passage beyond. Yes! Marion cried, her eyes flashing with excitement. This makes sense. Remember what the squirrel told us? This was a hunting lodge for royals before it became an inn. So they probably built a secret exit, just like at the castle, in case the kings needed a quick escape. And whoever attacks Richard knew about it, Cluck said, which, now that I think of it, implicates our owners even more. Agreed. Though I doubt they did the deed themselves, a little squirrel would have a hard time murdering a lion, even if he was drugged. Come on, Marion said, pointing to the secret passageway. This room may have been clean, but it's possible the passageway was not. Maybe we'll find evidence of the crime. She lowered her body to crawl through the hearth, then waited for a moment once inside to allow her eyes to adjust to the dim light. She found herself standing on a landing with a creaky-looking wooden staircase leading down into the darkness. She stepped cautiously onto the first step, holding her paw to the wall to keep her balance. Then she continued her descent, her heart pounding. It's just dark, she scolded herself. Whatever happened here was a long time ago. It's not like they're going to still be here just hiding out below. The stairs ended at a wooden door. She pushed it open, then peeked through, and was greeted by the forest outside, the back of the inn. Well, this is definitely how they must have gotten in, and she was interrupted by a sudden squawk from Cluck behind her. 
She turned back to her attendant, frowning. What is it? she asked. Did you find something? Cluck pointed to the floor, illuminated by the moonlight from outside. Marion followed her gaze, then gasped as she realized what her lady-in-waiting was pointing to. A shedding of snakeskin. Very familiar-looking snakeskin. I think we found our proof, she said, scooping it up in her paw. She felt sick to her stomach. The question is, what are we going to do about it?